Welcome to Media Minute. For this episode, we're going to be talking about the trailers for Luca and Army of the Dead. We're wrapping up our discussion on foreign films and guilty pleasures. And we're talking about TV shows that should be brought back. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Backwards. What? <laughs> that you threw me completely off. Okay, sorry. I'm Rachel Edge. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Backwards. And I'm Rachel Edge. And we're kicking off another episode. We're actually going to be doing a little bit of wrapping up last episode because everybody had so much stuff for our foreign films and our uh, guilty pleasures. So we're going to be dipping into that. Uh, first of all, just to kind of just to kind of sweep things up to finish things off. Um, Rachel, I know that you had a couple of more guilty. Pl- you were. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a look right now. <laughs> no, I, uh, just, I was surprised. <laughs> I did not expect to go first. That's all. <laughs> you got to be prepared for anything. Yeah, I, uh, but you did have. I know that you did have a couple of guilty pleasures that you did. d- didn't get around to last time. So yeah, I did. So uh, I'm going to start off with an absolutely terrible movie, but it's a great terrible movie, and that's Anaconda. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, know it's bad. a terrible movie, but I love it. Um, it has 38% on Rotten Tomatoes and nice. 37% nice. on Metacritic, but it has an 83% audience score. So I'm not the only one who thinks it's a good movie, which is <laughs> nice, because that's a first. <laughs> um, it actually came out April 11th, 1997. And um, <laughs> John Boyd's character, like the crazy poacher guy, um, he was actually offered to Jack Nicholson, Harrison Ford, Liam Neeson, Sean Connery, and Tommy Lee Jones before it went to him. Why does Liam Neeson always come up on these lists? I know, right? (laughs) You know, but also people were thinking about Liam Neeson no matter what. Absolutely. No, I I thought that was hilarious though because I'm like thinking of any other character playing that or any other actor playing that character. I I don't know if it would have (laughs) been, but it's good, I guess. I could see Tommy Lee Jones hopping in there. Well, I guess they it was the same thing with Sean Connery and like Tommy Lee Jones. Sean Connery too. I mean, 1997, those guys were still fairly prolific, so. Absolutely. Well, they gave them the script and I guess like they got nothing back. Like there was like, no, it was just like (laughs) crickets. Like they were like, yo, could you do this? And then they heard nothing and they were like, oh. I mean, was (laughs) Anaconda like the reason why we ended up with Snakes on a Plane? I hope so. That would be wicked. <laughs> that would have been an awesome thing. <laughs> was there a demand for snake movies? Yeah, I guess, eh? Um, actually, the crazy thing that I found out about this one, too, is that the CG was so expensive for, like, this time that, like, every computer-generated snake that you saw actually cost them $100,000. Wow. For, like, every one. It wasn't, like, in total. It was, like, every snake you saw that was CG'd was 100000 Was it worth it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that audience score is up there. So, like, yeah. regardless of what the critics say, if people have fun, yeah, absolutely, with the movie, then yeah, for sure, it's definitely got to be worth it. Well, like part of the reason they used the animatronic snakes because obviously they didn't want to drop a hundred grand for every scene the snake was in. They actually had two different snakes. Uh, one was dubbed the Queen Snake, which was like the super big snake that was about forty feet long and weighed five thousand pounds. And the Warrior Snake was the other one, and that one was twenty feet long and weighed. Um, 1500 pounds i was like that's crazy like the amount of work that probably went into those guys yeah the people who do like practical effects yeah like it's, yeah they're still better than cg yeah. i love cg and it's getting better every day but yeah practical we're still is, not yeah. we're still not quite there yeah you can't go wrong well you can <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah I appreciate the effort. Yeah, it's, like, uh, I feel like CG definitely has the effort and everything in it, but there's something about practical effects that you're just like, whoa, like, they made that happen, right? They didn't just go to the computer and be like, all right, put something in there. Yeah. You know? And then last fact I have, which I thought was crazy, is that Sony actually wants to restart the series. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, they have uh, a writer already on board, and that is Evan Daughtry, I think I'm saying that right. So he did the latest Tomb Raider, the remake of the t- uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Divergent. They already signed on. He's already writing the script, and they announced that last year. So I don't know. Yeah. With COVID and I mean, everything, very it's still kind going. of mid-tier movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So yeah. have they hit up Tommy Lee Jones yet? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> Get Liam Neeson. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be wicked. Yeah. But do it. Yeah, but yeah, that was like the the next one. And part of the reason I love the movie so much is the really terrible ADR with Ice Cube. Yep. Yeah, isn't there a story behind that? Yeah, actually, um, the whole thing was that originally the Anacondas was going to be a uh, R-rated movie. So, in classic Ice Cube fashion, dropped yeah. a ton of F-bombs, and then mm. they realized it would have been a 
it's a better market move if they did a PG-13 movie. So <laughs> he had to dub over all of his swears with like frick and crap and all that stuff. So that's part of the reason the ADR is so terrible is because <laughs> he drops so many F-bombs in the filming of it that they were like, well, we got to fix this. Otherwise, we can't get that PG-13 rating. As someone who's been the victim of b- bad ADR, <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got ADR'd into the I, ground, I, didn't I you? I did. <laughs> My one appearance in a uh, IMAX movie, I got ADR'd. <laughs> it's terrible because you have like a wicked voice. So, like I don't understand that at all. Yeah, I, I do have. Uh, Chris, you, you said you don't have any more. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't but have the, any more which, guilty pleasures. I don't. Oh, which fine. You're I, not not a very guilty person. I live guilt free. You live guilty. Right. I, I do have I one more. Yeah. What is it's it? It's not a movie. Uh, oh. It's actually an anime series that came out in the 2000s. And what happened was that the series did be- poorly. In Japan, so when it came over to voice it in North America, they basically told the cast that they can do whatever they want with the script, nice. except for changing the names, and they did. Oh, nice! And uh, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, came out in two thousands, and it's it's not politically correct. If you're looking for a politically correct anime series, no, no. But <laughs> uh, look up some clips on YouTube of ghost stories. And uh, you'll see Ghost what stories. I'm t- okay. see what I'm talking about, yeah. Okay. Like the cast just went nuts with dubbing this thing over. Like, so they had no direction for it. That's kind of wicked that they let them do that though. At the same time, like, hey, we're doing this, but do whatever you want. Like that's kind of that's kind of cool. Oh, it happens all the time. Really? Like, um, am I just learning about this? Uh, what is it like? Typically, when they need uh, just like background murmur, yeah. Like if you're in a bar and they just need like to record some background audio. Yeah, they'll usually hire like comedians to just say whatever they want, and if you can isolate like that audio track, a lot of the time you hear some messed up stuff. Really? It's just yeah, it's just them just being as filthy and as like obscene as possible. <laughs> That's actually fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. So every, every, anytime you hear background music in a, in a movie or not music, sorry, uh, murmuring. Yeah, murmuring, dialogue. Be prepared. It's actually yeah. yeah. There's actually some pretty. What's uh, the deal with airplane food? <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst Jerry Seinfeld impression so, yeah, ever. A little, uh, <laughs> yeah, a little behind the yeah. scenes. Maybe uh, we should ADR. ADR. <laughs> Secrets. Uh, So you got one more? Yes, I do, and that's Ace Ventura: Pet Detective. Yeah. Because it's it's Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. It's one Mm -hmm. of his uh, maybe his first kind of breakout role. Yeah. So basically, like this entire. Was that before the mask? No, actually after. So like this year that he filmed, it was like the mask, Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. So this was like his most profitable year, like in his career the golden the era of Kerry yeah absolutely before he went nuts yeah, yeah, yeah I'm kind, kind of, of I'm, yeah I'm sad it. about that one um, actually though some fun facts I found out about it, it was that Jim Carrey wasn't actually like the first choice like that was like their I think third or fourth and I was like really like who was the first and they actually wanted Rick Morianis as Ace Ventura and they wanted to make it like a like a more serious dramedy hmm I was like that's weird and the only reason Rick Morianis didn't take it was because he was playing um, right. Barney on the Flintstones Yep. So that was kind of his one of his last roles before yeah. he stepped away from Hollywood because he wanted to take care of his kids. That was Absolutely. a good casting choice. Yeah. And oh. John Goodman is. Oh, for the, yeah, for Fred Flintstones. Flintstones. Heck yeah, yeah, that's like literally on point. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, also, with this one, they were actually thinking about doing a female Ace Ventura. Any guesses on who they had uh, lined up for that? Mm-hmm. Uh, female Sigourney comedian. Mid nineties. Female comedian. Yeah, it was like female comedian. Ellen. No, I don't, yeah, I don't think she's getting offered a lot of roles. Well, this nowadays. was before that. Though. This, this was during the Ace Ventura heyday. Yeah. Any guesses? Hmm. No. Right. Um. Popular female comedian in the nineties. Well, I wouldn't say she. Ro- was... Rosie O'Donnell. No. Rose- <laughs> Roseanne. No. Okay, I'll I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, I it got was, nothing. Uh, it was actually Whoopi Goldberg that they were thinking about putting putting into that role, and I was like, <laughs> well. Yeah, I feel like it would have been a way different movie. Uh, yeah. Sister Act was cool. Yeah. That's true. And, but, she, and like, she was on Next Generation. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, I was looking at the uh, the scores because I was curious on how terrible my movie tastes were. Uh, 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, 37% on Metacritic, but 91% mm. audience score. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. Ace Ventura was a successful <laughs> film. It really was. Un- unlike my speaking this morning. It's Maybe I should be ADR'd. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, and uh, I just like 
every time I feel really bad or anything, I just put that on and I'm immediately in a better mood after the movie. So that's part of the reason I watch it. And I probably watched it way too many times, to be completely honest. So. Can, can you watch a movie too many times? Uh, I yeah. feel like once you start like mimicking stuff and like just randomly being able to quote the movie at like any point. Yeah. I could, Might be. A... <laughs> I, I could do that with Braveheart for a little while, so maybe I won't judge. Did you ever see Three Billboards? No. Yeah, you can only watch that movie once. Yeah. Yeah, there's only a few movies you can watch like once though. It's like pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Like heavy movies like that definitely can. It's not yeah. like one that you're like, all right, let's watch this one. It's like uh... for me, and it's a foreign film, uh, Grave of the Fireflies. Oh I've god. O- I've only seen that once, and I will never watch it again. I don't think I've seen it. Yeah. It is one of the most ridiculously sad movies I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. The worst thing about it, like, you know how it ends. Yep. Because they show it to you, like, right at the beginning, but still. Yeah, like, does anyone, does anyone watch Marley and Me for fun? <laughs> oh, I got a story about that. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, so we were trying to cheer up because our dog just passed away. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and you watched Marley and Me? <laughs> and we were like, let's watch a really cute movie about it's got a, a puppy family on the and cover. a dog. <laughs> I don't think we've watched that movie. Like, my family and I have watched that movie since. And, like, I think well, that's, like, forever scarred into my brain. So, yeah. it was a good movie, but, like, definitely not the time to watch it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on. Uh, Chris. Yes. You have a trio of foreign films. Yeah, show and tell time. Yep. Let's do oh, it. you brought them again? Yeah, of course. Oh this, this man and his physical media. Yeah. We've, uh, we've talked about Godzilla. Actually, I guess King Kong was first, so... First there was King Kong. Yep. Then there was Godzilla. Oh. Now, actually, this movie's probably about 15 years old, but close enough. Now, Big Man Japan. <gasps> oh, I've one. seen that. It's amazing. Uh, about a... Hey. Look at you. Yep. Uh, about a guy who gets electrocuted, grows huge so he can fight giant monsters, but he's kind of washed up. People kind of hate him because he's just wrecked <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> <laughs> he wrecks stuff. Um. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. Help me out, man. This is a weird one. I, I, I tried to find. I like, haven't seen it like since it released. So I, I like. I have vague memories of it. I remember liking it. Yeah, like I feel like it's one of those movies that you watch and it's just so ridiculous that you're just having a great time the whole the, movie. The last ten minutes is probably some of the weirdest. Yes. Yeah. Footage ever committed to film. Absolutely. I, I don't want to ruin it. I mean, if, if you want, just YouTube it. Just Big Man Japan ending. It kind of ruins it, so maybe don't. Just watch <laughs> yeah. the whole movie. But, uh, yeah, if you like uh, big, giant monsters that are really weird and pretty phallic. I was like, this isn't for kids. Yeah, definitely an adult movie. Everything 100%. is, uh, yeah, most of the monsters are shaped like genitals. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it is. Uh, but, yeah, really weird comedy, but... Yeah, I feel like giant monsters and Japan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a large man. Yeah, a very <laughs> large man. Who's big. Thumbs up. Nice. Nice. Uh, what else you got? You, oh, you're, I'm doing all yeah, three. You're doing all three. Yeah, you're wow, going. okay. Uh, number two. We're going from Japan to Colombia. Oh. Uh, done in all one shot. And not one of those movies where, like, Birdman, where it tells you it's all done in one shot, but you can tell it's not. This actually was. Based on a true story about a woman who gets a bomb uh, strapped around her neck by terrorists. And it's about the next 86 minutes of her life. Uh, Really intense, really good. Might be a little hard to find. But, uh, yeah. Just a super intense movie. They shot it all in one shot? Yeah, it's crazy. How long is this movie? Uh, 86 minutes. Holy crap! Yeah, that's impre- wow. Yeah. Like, impressive. Wow, impressive. Yeah, because you know, you know, you get those movies where it's like, oh, it looks like it's all in one shot, but you can kind of tell. When yeah, they, like Ma- imagine being that one person that slips up like fifty-seven <laughs> minutes oh. into the ruins. Like, everything yeah, like did they have to like restart every time there's a mistake? Probably. Oh my god. Either that or just a crazy image. Maybe who knows? Maybe they just nailed it right out of the gate. Yeah. Just, I mean, if you talk about like a play, maybe. Yeah, maybe. You know, that's true. Like doing a complete performance in an hour and a half. I mean, it's it's possible, but yeah. it's generally not done in, in film. Yeah, you don't really see it, but like that's insane. Like, what's it called? Sorry. PVC one. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to check that out. Yep. For sure. Yay! By the way, I did watch House. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and I do recommend it. <laughs> 
right. Uh, that's, that's all I could say about it. It's uh, very dreamlike. Yeah, it's one of those that's, things yeah, you can't really it, mildly. Yeah. You can't really explain it because it's like one of those. It's like you have to watch it. Yeah. The, any rules for cinematography? Gone. <laughs> any rules for everything? Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Don't like all. the whole movie is just. But it a works. Lawless. It somehow works. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I said, super watchable. Nice. Yeah. I don't know how he did it, but. What's it? What's your next one? Right. I see another My, one. Yeah, I got one more. And an itchy nose. Give me a second here. Very professional. <laughs> uh, this is actually has we got a reappearance of an actress. She was also in audition. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we got Tokyo Gore Police. Awesome name. Yeah, that's wicked. Um. This <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> uh, the story's pretty simple just a cop going after her father's killers but there's mutants there's a lot of body uh, what's, 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 what's the term? Bo- um, body horror yeah yeah body horror so if you're in a like david cronenberg or anything like that this movie is messy there is blood all over the place i take it there's tokyo gore and and or police yeah they check something yep, like that yep. <laughs> yep that's yeah the, the title pretty much says it all if you if you're into uh the, the japanese type of you get an arm cut off and just, psh, yeah, <laughs> tons of that, tons. Like, yeah, like you feel you probably need to shower after watching this movie, but you should still watch it. It's really good. But did, I, oh, did, did Takashi Miike do this one, or is this a different actor? Nope, uh, this, is totally, this is totally something. Totally, I don't know. It's not Miike, but yeah, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Yeah, no worries. Yep, I was just curious. But lots of gore, tons of fun, body horror. Um. Yeah. Cool. From the nice. producers of Machine Girl, Death Trance, and Flesh for the Beast. I have no uh, idea. All of those sound spectacular. Yeah, like, so. they sound great. I have yeah, no okay, idea what that, that is. To you then. Nice. Oh, sweet. Everybody gets a whole <laughs> yeah, movie. You get, some, you get a movie. <laughs> you get, you're the Oprah Winfrey of movies. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, speaking of uh, gory things, we're going to change gears a little bit. Um, Diablo 2. Dun, dun. Came out yeah. about 20 years ago. And okay. they're redoing it with uh, modern graphics and whatnot. Oh, uh, they're keeping like the same interface and whatever. It's called Diablo 2 Resurrected. Hmm. And, I mean, Diablo 3 came out maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, about that. I'd say and it somewhere. wasn't really well received. Nah, I bought it. I played it Yeah, for about a day. Oh, was it really two. that bad? I, or just it didn't hold up to I, the I think, Diablo yeah, name? I think the release was really rough yeah they'd worked on it for like a year and a half and i think people started to like it after a while oh okay but uh yeah it, i think people I, were probably expecting more diablo 2 because like people who love diablo 2 like love yeah oh yeah. diablo 2 <laughs> okay fair enough uh so a lot of people excited for this uh i've seen screenshots and a little bit some video i mean it just looks like diablo 2 but the graphics have been updated which is all people are really looking for. So Diablo 2 is getting the Disney treatment. Well, there's no <laughs> live action. <laughs> there's no live action characters. Yep. Yeah, I suppose. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, is, is the remake disease bleeding into video games now? I would argue, yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, they've like redone. Fantasy got remade. Uh, Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2 and 3, and they are working on 4. Oh, man. From what I understand. Yeah. Uh but those Resident Evil remakes have been, they've gotten good press. Press. That's true, yeah. I mean, if you grew up with them and, like, all you want is the same game, but, you know, quality of life improvements, better graphics. It's when they try to change too much that it doesn't really work out. Yeah, that's fair. For, for Diablo 2? Yeah. Or, like, any oh, okay, kind, yeah. kind of remake. Yeah, I don't know. I've never... Revisit. I, I, I played the crap out of a. What was that Final Fantasy when they remade Seven? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did the Final Fantasy remake that came out late last year, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's never had a desire to go back to to Diablo two. I actually uh, played a little bit of the first Diablo earlier this week. Like the first one. The, vi- the like the very yeah. first one. Uh, it's it's interesting. It's because um, there are things in Diablo one that they don't have in two. I think the first one, you're, it's does the atmosphere better? Like you go okay. down to that like first dungeon, it's super dark, and uh, 
you know you feel you feel weak which i didn't really do in diablo 2 <laughs> but anyway um, so yeah diablo 2 coming out cool yeah nice I, i'll check it out yeah, i think. probably will yeah yeah and now a couple of uh now trailers <laughs> yes uh, let me get my trailer voice in a world <laughs> love it of injustice um <laughs> there comes a time I mean, Snyder's been in the... <laughs> I'll stop talking over you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just talk like this the entire time. I don't know if I have a trailer voice, guys. <laughs> yes, everyone has a trailer voice. Okay, don't go back to the guilty and, pleasure whispering, please. And dark past. Tonight on Showcase. <laughs> stop it. But yeah, Snyder's been in the news recently with the yeah. whole Snyder Cut thing. Uh, yep, he's got actually got a new movie coming out called Army of the Dead on Netflix. Cool. Uh, Dave Batista. Yes, yep. the only it, thing I noticed in the trailer, to be honest, it, I was like, oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, zombie heist film set in Vegas. That's kind of the three I points. I mean, if you're going to have a zombie heist film, it better be in Vegas. Like, where yeah. else could you put that? <laughs> the only thing for me, it reminds me of another video game, which was Dead Rising. Uh, oh, Dead, yeah. Dead Rising 2, like, took place in, in Vegas. Yeah, it, it, did, it yeah. just reminded me of that so much. Wow, uh, yeah. I think definitely. it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'll, I'll watch it. I haven't watched any of his, like, DC movies. Yeah. And I know a lot of people hate on his version of Dawn of the Dead. I liked it. I didn't even know he did a version of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah, like the... Sarah Polly was in that. Fast Zombies movie. Oh. Yeah. Well, then. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm a big, a like, huge... Like, Dawn of the Dead, like the George Romero movie. Well, you got it signed. It's like one of my... Yeah. Like, you I, met him. I got multiple signed copies, yeah. actually. I kind of fanboyed out, but... Fair. Where was I going with that? I don't know. I distracted yeah. George yeah. Romero. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I love, yeah, know, uh, especially I'll, for someone who just loves, like, Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead is, like, one of my favorite movies. Not just horror movies, but favorite movies ever. And yeah. I should be more discriminate, discriminatory when it comes to a Dawn of the Dead remake, but uh, I, I... Also, I the lead Zach in Snyder's. that, uh, Sarah Polly, who's Canadian. Yep. Oh, okay. CanCon. CanCon. I didn't know that, yep. actually. So, that, wow, okay. I yeah, she was the up. girl in The Road to Avonlea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was actually filmed in Canada too. Was it really? Yeah, I can't remember where. It's like somewhere like Mississauga or just outside. There. I feel like Canada. Maybe not Mississauga. Like when it comes to like filming and stuff, Canada gets like hit up all the time because it's like we have like everything. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It's like, oh hey, you need a city? Okay, go to Toronto. You need like a, a coast? Go either to like St. John's or over to um, BC coast here. Like, yeah, it's kind of wicked. It, and it's cheaper. It is. So if any American filmmakers, long shot. Are watching this? Come to Canada. Yep. Head up north, cross the border if you if you can. Well, not yet. You gotta wait. Yeah, gotta wait a while. Yeah. So, um, good for luck. anyone waiting for their next Pixar uh, dosage, uh, Luca uh, trailer for Luca dropped today. Yeah, it looks so cute. I'm yeah. excited. It's yeah, it's I'm Pic- lukewarm. Pixar. Luca. Yeah, like. I, I get that, but I don't know. I, I I will always watch a Pixar movie, though. Yeah, like I agree. I will always give one like a, a shot. For sure. Yeah, chances are you're in for a good time. Oh yeah, yeah. well, like, well uh, or a, a good movie, I should say. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's like a, the thing I liked is like that the creators of Coco is doing is doing this one. I think you can kind of tell. Yeah. But like, yeah, I love that animation style though. I thought it's such a, like a cool way to do it, right? Versus like the Toy Story kind of animation, right? So it's kind of nice to see that they're like kind of going out of the box with it so yeah. i'm excited also there's the big man with no eyes why, yep. why is that a staple of animation i don't know a large man with no eyes doesn't that mean he's the bad guy no that's not true no it usually Isn't means the they're, they're no. the dad <laughs> no yeah they're the dad character almost every time like if you look at cloudy with a chance of meatballs yeah that guy, that dad character did not have eyes until like the one scene where he was like getting uh flint to promise him something and then they actually raised the unibrow yeah. and it was like one of the funniest scenes i think i've seen <laughs> Um, yeah. Also, a little bit of news coming out of the animation world. Uh, fans of Avatar The Last Airbender will be pleased to know that the original creators have worked out a deal with Nickelodeon, and they're going to make some new animated content in Ooh. the Avatar universe. That's exciting. Hmm. They've been waiting for that for a while, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, they have. And I think there's a Netflix uh, live action thing being worked on as well, but people really aren't waiting for it because the last live action yeah. airbender <laughs> that was that was my Jibouille. boy but <laughs> i will 100 percent agree like that fandom has full right to be mad like that was yeah. mm, no 
I have to know. <laughs> Well, so hopefully the Netflix one is good, but like at the same time, it's like with that low of a bar to clear, I yeah. feel like you should be good. I, I think the original creators were like involved initially with the live action thing, and then there was some sort of dispute or something like that. And that's usually how it happens. They parted ways, so yeah. But I mean, that series came out like 18 years ago, so I'm sure yeah. people will be pleased that it's being brought back, or at least some part of the universe. Yeah, it'll bring be good. A lot back. Speaking of bringing things back, hey, hey. and segway. we talked segway. We, segway. Segway. <laughs> We didn't time it as well last time. No, <laughs> this my time. bad. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we'll work on it. Yeah. Okay. Last time it was just a fluke. Uh, we're going to be talking about, I mean, we talk about remakes sometimes being bad, but we're going to focus on what we think should be brought back. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. In terms of television shows, uh, who wants to contribute first? Nobody. Wow, weird. Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> we are very, I can go we're first. Very, we're very yeah. active this morning. Um, let's see. Who should I start with? I'm going to go with Home Movies. Ah. Animated show? Yep. I don't know if I've seen that. I, I've seen it, yeah. Nice. Okay, good. <laughs> um, it didn't really last very long. I think it was only like six episodes, but then it got renewed. Yeah. But it was by the, uh, well, one of the creators of Bob's Burgers. But like oh. probably like 15 years before Bob's Burgers. Okay. Yeah. But, but a bunch of kids that make home movies and... Oh, cute. Yeah. Okay. I, I've seen it occasionally on, like, uh, back when people still had cable, like, yeah. Teletune overnight. Yeah, yeah. It would yeah. always be on. Be on in, like, like, at 1 a.m. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But you can, it's out there. You can find it. So, yeah, home movies, Brandon Small nice. and, and Friends. Just get into adventures. I like it's, it. Yeah, it's a simple show. It's really fun. If you like the, the sense of humor of Bob's Burgers, then you'll definitely yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. be all up in uh, home Is movies. There, I know this is like a weird question to ask, but is there anywhere you can like stream it, or do you have to like kind of just dig? Yeah, you're gonna have to. I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere, definitely. <laughs> somewhere in a world. <laughs> um, Where you've downloaded Tor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll go next. Yeah. Uh, for me, this is a, a television show that I seem to be the, the only person that remembers. <laughs> uh, Space Above and Beyond came on Fox in 1995. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm the <laughs> only person that remembers this show. Uh, sci-fi, uh, space battles, uh, a war between humans and uh, an alien race called, I think they called them the Chigs. I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've actually seen it. That sounds racist. Um, great, like, background stuff. Nice. Uh, you know, they, they have kind of a fleshed out world. There's a group of like humans that were grown in a vat to fight a previous war. Huh. But, you know, there's some conflict between them and kind of the natural humans in the squad. Uh, it's based on actually a 1990, uh, 1960s World War II show called Combat. They wanted like a show that focused on like a group uh, in a war, but they, so they did it, but they did it with sci-fi. There's sci-fi gunfights, there's sci-fi space battles, which oh, are like two of my mm. favorite things. Very underutilized. Uh, uh, some fun facts. In the first episode, there's a drill instructor, and it's the same drill instructor from Full Metal Jacket. Whoa, Arlie Emery. Nice. Yeah, they brought him in to play the drill instructor for the uh, first episode. Well, he doesn't even really play a drill instructor. He, he was, he was yeah. 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 He wasn't acting. This is, he was just another, yeah. another day at the office. Yep. Um, they built the full-scale models of the fighter craft that they used. Nice. And uh, apparently they stored them a little while on a Russian freighter. And apparently the Russians thought that they were like a new fighter design for the U.S. <gasps> so they started snapping pictures of <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Gotta remember, 1995 was still like Cold War, yep. uh, you know, kind of cooling down type yeah, thing. I guess so. so yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, though. Just like they see it, they're like, oh, no. Yeah. But uh, if you ever get a chance to watch it, like check out Space Above and Beyond, I'd love to see like a modernization of it. Yeah, it sounds like it would do really well. Yeah. So uh, make okay. it happen. Yeah. yeah, please, somebody, I don't know. Um, for mine, I kind of went like old school nostalgia in the sense of like childhood yep. TV shows that I haven't seen and I really want back. Um, is The first one I got is actually a French, Italian, Canadian TV show. Yep. And it's called Martin Mystery. I don't think either of you have any yeah. idea what I, I'm going to talk about. I'm vaguely, <laughs> vaguely aware of it. Okay, fair enough. Yep. Um, it's actually based on an Italian comic book series called Martin Mystery by Alfredo Castelli. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. I feel like I did. Um, basically, it stars two step siblings, Martin and Diana, and Jabba the Caveman, who is my favorite character. I think they brought him in like the third episode. They actually thought him out because they found him, and then 
try to like modernize them. It was pretty funny. And they basically get assigned paranormal investigations by mom. Who's mom? It's yeah. like a it's like a <laughs> organization? Yeah, or an organization. Like, it's just like M O M. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like something to do with like they're just constantly fighting like um paranormal stuff that's happening in the world. It was kind of like around the time where they realized that Japanese anime was a really big thing. Yeah. So they tried to like kind of make their own version. It's French anime, Franime. Yes, exactly. Frenemy. Um yep. And yeah, it was really good. It's it was crazy though because I didn't realize how much references it had to like H P Lovecraft, The Thing, Evil Dead, and Godzilla. Like I had a ton of those, yeah. and like looking back, I was like, "Oh my god, okay." So like I partially um, think that like the reason I would watch so much creepy movies now is probably my TV show choice as a child. <laughs> but yeah, it ended in two thousand six, and uh, it's a childhood favorite, and I think it would be awesome if yeah. they did a reboot. So I, I think I've seen a couple episodes, and I remember yeah. them actually going to like locations in Canada. Yeah, it was really wicked. Because I'm, I'm sure there was like a Charlottetown episode. Yeah, there was. I can't remember hmm. what it was about, but I remember there was one that like scarred me for life. It was like this weird, I don't know, vampire thing. But they kind of went on like the Van Helsing thing, where like the babies and stuff were in like sacks of like gel and stuff it oh was boy. it was really disturbing <laughs> so there's a part of me that's like understands maybe why they took it off but yeah. i'm also like bring it back it was great <laughs> this was a kid show yeah why y- ytv actually. babies and jars and teletoon yep go cool. yeah. ytv chris what do you got uh next i'm gonna go northern exposure yeah hey there we go from i think early 90s yeah no, yep. totally early 90s i love that show when i was a kid um but a doctor new york guy gets a well, you know, transferred, I suppose, to a, a very small town in Sicily, Alaska. And uh, it's very much a, a fish out of water kind of story. Nice. Um, kind of like Twin Peaks if you just took out the weird <laughs> and the murder. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That's the reason I want to get to Alaska so bad. Yeah. I love that. You, movie. Did, you see kid. some Twin Peaks locations? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely not... It doesn't really... Uh, not Twin Peaks, so it's more than exposure. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not a kid's movie, but as a kid, no, I, I love the crap out of that show. Yeah. Nice. Exposure. Yeah, there... I tried to find fun facts about all these movies, but I came up dry. Yeah, it was like me too. Yeah. Yeah, for me, anything. it's very scant for like yeah. television stuff. Um, so Northern Exposure, bring it back. Probably never going to happen. But if you, please. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> if you're into uh, outdoorsy Alaska-based uh, TV shows that are kind of quirky, but lots of whimsy, give it a shot. Sure. If you can find it, you probably have to buy the DVDs. Because I don't think it's on any... It, actually, it's not on any streaming services because the creators didn't want to pay more money for the theme song. Oh. <laughs> which is very iconic. Yep. Well, my next uh, pick... Um, going to sound very familiar because it's a science fiction show. Does it got a Bruce in it? It doesn't have a Bruce oh. in oh. it. Yeah, about a space war <laughs> in space. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I know what I like. That's good. I like what I know. <laughs> uh, this was actually an animated show. Uh, Exo Squad came out in 1993. Oh, I forgot oh, about okay. that. Yeah. Uh, two seasons. Uh, influences for the show include Battlestar Galactica, Aliens, and the X-Men cartoon. But, nice. uh, yeah, this one's about, like, a uh, war between humans and a group of humans that they grew to work on Mars. And then they had a big rebellion. Everybody has, like, mech suits. Oh, sweet. So that, that's a bonus point for me, anything with mechs. Hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, most of the main voice cast were Canadian. Woohoo! Nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like, five out of six were a lot of actually animated shows from the 90s, they went to Canada. For yeah, the, definitely. It's like the uh, X-Men cartoon. Reboot, I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> but a uh, fun show. It's show. Um, it was dark as well. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, cartoons, kid shows. Uh, this one had death in it, Whoa. which was hmm. big for like an animated show in the early 90s. Oh, for sure. Um, like often or? It was, it was war. So, yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, it's not common, so you, yeah. you don't see it very, like, I don't know if, if they went, like, full saving Private Ryan or uh, what. Not, not quite, but, you know, there's a few named characters that get offed wow. uh, during the show. Um, basically, basically, the influence for the show, aside from the ones I named, they were trying to make, like, an American anime because anime hmm. tends to be yeah. kind of more mature, a little bit darker. Yeah. So. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, one of my favorites, I'd love to see a modern version of that done well hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. the thing done well hope like if the wrong 
people in animation got to it, it would be bad. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> it's, it's sad when that happens. When you get excited about something and then you see it, you're like, yeah. no, <laughs> like, hmm. this is part of my childhood. Yeah. Don't do that. But, uh, yeah, I they did 13 episodes for the first season, and then they expanded it for the second season to mm-hmm. get, like, a full thing. Kind of political. Like, they go into, like, mature kind of why we're fighting. You know, the wow. bad guys have good reasons to fight because they were enslaved. Yeah. You know, there's some <laughs> philosophical discussions. Like, for a cartoon in 1993 that came out on Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, that seems pretty That's a deep yeah, cartoon. Yeah. Like yeah. Swinging for the fences. For sure. Impressed. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Rachel, who do you have for two? Okay, this one is like, I just recently rediscovered it, so I'm very happy because you can find all of like the shorts and stuff on YouTube, but it starts with uh, one of the most infamous lines. It's a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, and that's (laughs) Freaky Stories. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's hosted by Larry DeBug and Maurice the Maggot. And it's basically just a bunch of, like, urban legends and, like, folklore and stuff. Yeah. I fell in love with that show. I was terrified of Maurice the Maggot for the longest time, though, because of the way that they animated him. He was, like, really slimy, and I was like, yeah. ah! A little freaky. Yeah. yeah he, well, it fits, right? Freaky yeah. stories. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's another Canadian show. It aired from uh, 1997 to 2000, so it had a really good run. But I feel like it would it would be better now, because I feel like a lot of people are more so into folklore and into, like, the whole supernatural stuff. Yeah. So I feel like it would be really good to bring back. But fun fact, apparently our neighbors down south, like the states, they actually never got the chance to meet um, Larry or Maurice. They oh, they only didn't got, get it Yeah, they only got the title card of the diner, and then they just went straight into the Urban Legends. And I'm like, but they were, like, hmm. some of the best parts. Yeah. So I felt really bad, but... Yeah, they got ripped off. Yeah, but the animation styles was really wicked. They always had, like, a different animation for each one. And, um, yeah, it was always fun. And yeah. I learned a ton about folklore <laughs> and urban legends. It, it's strange. It's like in, in the yeah. In the 90s, there were, like, a lot of things, like, kids were super into, like, the paranormal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there was a bunch of, like, horror anthologies oh, for, for sure. kids. Oh, in, yeah, like the in, Crypt in Keeper, in the 90s. too? Uh, yeah, there was a... I don't know if it was from the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, well, there was a Crypt Keeper well, series cartoon. that was for kids. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I used to watch that too. Yeah, it was from the Crypt Keeper. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was that. Uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yep. Yeah. Uh, was kind of the. It was like the Canadian version one. of Goosebumps kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Goosebumps too. Oh, was Goosebumps Canadian? Yeah. Well, oh, no, I meant. But there was, show. yeah, there was a oh, Goosebumps. Okay. Show. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, it was. I just love that, and I think it would be really fun to bring back. So I feel like again, like that, that's kind of on the the way up again. Like if you look at Supernatural and that popularity, I feel like you'd be able to get people to watch it too. So yeah, things kind of come and go, right? Yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm sure there'll be like another point where like the in thing is like kids watching like spooky and horror stuff. Oh, absolutely. I hope yeah. it comes back. But yeah, I don't know. Here, here you go. I guess. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. Actually, speaking of Supernatural, I'm pretty sure people would be happy if that came back. Oh, it just ended. Yeah, right. Um, I'm going to go, actually, since we're on the Canadian theme, <laughs> you can't do that on television. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Good little skit so- show on oh, I forgot uh, about that. Wasn't it Alanis sure Morissette in that? Yeah, I think yeah, Alanis Morissette was on it. Sorry, you just unlocked like a, a they, nostalgic they piece. Yeah. Like, people. Whoa. Yeah, it was like the Canadian Nickelodeon, basically. Basically, yeah. 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 Things with the slime and it was just skits. Yeah, just, I yeah. That. Yeah, there's a kids in the hall, but for kids. Yeah. That's awesome. Bring that back. Yeah. There's probably some version of it. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not like, exactly like that. Well, that's the title, thing is like, I feel like, like, I don't know if you guys, like, like kids I have some comedies. I have some friends who have some kids and I guess like the turn in cartoon and animation for children is definitely gone very political. Yeah. Uh, in well, that sense. So I don't know all... if they'll ever, like, I hope they bring stuff like that back just because it's fun, but I don't know. Drop my chair real quick. Yeah. There we go. He's shorter. <laughs> uh, my last one yeah. is Babylon Five. I uh, <laughs> you gotta show it because I I kind of thought I kind of thought that you might bring up Deep Space Nine, so I went with Babylon Five. Oh. Nah, Deep Space Nine is perfect as it is. <laughs> Don't fair. touch it. Leave it alone. Ha, ha, have you seen the docu- documentary yet? Uh, what we left behind. It's about I don't think yeah. I, they go. I they interview every. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check it out. It's on YouTube, I think. It's uh, okay. yeah. They interview like Berman and like all the actors who were on Deep Space Nine. It only came out like last year. Really, nice. but they do like a theoretical uh, Deep Space Nine episode if they brought it back. Ooh. Uh, now, hmm. so like cool. It, 
uh, mm. what, <laughs> trying to discover what's going on with Cisco and stuff like that because he kind of disappeared at the end. Anyway, yeah, I was talking kind of about Deep it. Space uh, Babylon 5. I mean, hey, we can talk about Deep Space Nine all day. Yeah, yeah like that, that's we are a now whole... a Deep Space Nine podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole episode or yeah. season. So the time that Odo... <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of the connection between Babylon 5 and Deep Space Nine, the guy who created, uh, created J. Michael Straczynski, uh, he actually pitched Babylon 5, and then suddenly Paramount hmm. decided to do uh, Deep Space Nine. Ooh. And Ooh. he Uh-oh. found out about it because his wife was working at uh, the, the offices at the time. <gasps> so they brought everybody in for a meeting. It's like, hey, we're working on this new show. It's about a space station that has a number attached. And his wife was like, uh... I mean, <laughs> Wait a minute. I kind of have an idea of my own. Yeah, so... I'm not saying that the concept for Deep Space Nine was stolen from J. Michael Straczynski, but in his autobiography, he kind of... <laughs> well, if it was... It's very yeah. suspicious. It's very suspicious. I'm still glad it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, Deep Space Nine is a great show. Uh, also, J. Michael Straczynski, uh, he wrote for many of the uh, classic 80s cartoons. He wrote for She-Ra, he wrote for Whoa. Ghostbusters, he wrote for oh, nice. Captain Power. Wow. Um, Captain Power, yeah. Yeah. I, I know this, but... If you ever get a chance to read his autobiography, which is called Waiting for Superman, uh, read that. It's very good. Good. Very good. Talk, talks a lot about working in animation in like the 80s and writing. And, nice. That must uh, have been a wild time. Yeah. He also had a bit of a rough life, so there's that there, too. Hmm. Nice. Um, he had all five seasons planned out before the show started airing. Um Wow. Yeah, like doing like a show that had like a continuing theme uh, for multiple seasons was not a thing back in back in the nineties. So it was like one of the first ones that did that. Oh, that's that cool. Some serious pre-production. Yeah. 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 Wow. He was a prolific writer. He wrote all twenty-two episodes of season three, as well as like most of the episodes for the other seasons. Like most sci-fi shows you see that they rotate through yeah, yeah. writers you know this guy like he had it planned out and he wrote most of it himself that's kind of cool which that's definitely wicked. helps with like uh, quality control yeah and like continuity too yeah like I, I mean the creator knows what he wants and he knows yeah. how it yeah. works like did, like did you see what happened at Twin Peaks when David Lynch left yeah to go film Wild at Heart mm, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, he wanted uh, David Duchovny and uh, Jillian Anderson was the other one. Okay. Yeah. He wanted them to show up uh, in one episode as a member <laughs> of uh, Psy Corps, which is kind of a police force on the station. Oh, that's cool. But it d- d- didn't pan out. Oh, but he wanted uh, to have like that cameo. X Files cameo. Yeah. That would have been great. Anyone who's seen pictures of Babylon 5 know that there's like these people with this kind of flat haircut. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're called the Centauri. And apparently the. Uh, actor who played the main Centauri, he showed up to audition uh, for this part, and all the other actors there had their hair, like, done up hmm. in this, like, s- this brim type thing, and he was the only one that didn't. So he oh. went he went to the washroom and got some liquid soap <gasps> and tried to make his hair like that, and it didn't work out. Oh, no. So he went into the audition, like, crying and apologizing, but uh, he got the part. <laughs> oh! Anyway, <laughs> just so just covered in soap. <laughs> At least that's how I'm picturing soap it. Soap and like the back part of your hair kind of like lifted like, up like uh, this. To be fair, like, like something about Mary. I feel like I feel like when somebody's trying their hardest and stuff, and it's like they, the producers and stuff can see that. It's like they're gonna pick that over the, yeah. like everybody else who was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Just right? a grown man oh. weeping, covered in bubbles, <laughs> pretty much. That suds. Poor man. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I guess it worked out because he got the part. Yeah. But still, though, like, Maybe. oh, I'm gonna try that in my next job interview. Yeah. You're gonna soapy and crying. <laughs> Apparently, it works. Yeah, give it a shot. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, five seasons, some uh, great sci-fi stuff. Awesome. Um, CGI doesn't really hold up. Mm, yeah. it, yeah. It's very early CGI, and uh, Sir Sensi talks about it in his autobiography that, uh, you know, about their budget and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it worked at the time. Um, sure. I find that most CG from the 90s doesn't really... They're just too overzealous about using it. Yeah. Like, hey, we got a computer. Well, I Let's mean, use it. it was new like, technology yeah. at the time, right? So obviously yeah, everybody, everybody wanted to hop excited. on and be like, go do it, right? Yeah. But it depended on how it was used, right? Yeah. Because there's like CG in the original Jurassic Park, but. That's true. Yeah, that was that was revolutionary. That was crazy. Yeah. So maybe not, like, hashtag not all. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, I'd like to see that uh, brought back. Um, Rachel, nice. you got one more? Yeah, so this one actually is a live action game show that was on when I was little, and it was called Uh Oh. Okay. I don't know if anybody oh, remembers yeah, that show. Yeah, yeah. YTV? Yeah, 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 YTV. So you could get slimed if you don't answer the question and stuff. I always wanted to get slimed. I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, I got to go on the show. And then by the time I got old enough, I canceled. Oh. I was like, oh, this is, this yeah, is sad. Yeah, it wasn't around for too long. Was but it? Yeah. Uh, the really cool thing, though, is like apparently um, they had a slime tour that went across Canada. So it's like they yeah. actually got like in the truck, like drove around Canada to different spots. You could compete on like these mini game shows <laughs> and like do it. And it was like it was super cool because it was like super interactive. Like You got like T-shirts, and, like all that kind of stuff, too. They actually showed up at Callaway Park the one time I was there. But again, my <laughs> mom was like, we're leaving. You can't do it. I was like, oh, oh, mom. it was bad. I felt so bad. But that like sounds like a ton of fun. Oh, it was it was wicked. But like, I think it would be really fun, too, if like you did like an adult version part of me version of that as well because like i feel like being like an older kid like what, so, would, what would an adult yeah. version be well it's the same concept just more bring back the kids who didn't win yeah in that the, kind of thing, you know? yeah. <laughs> but um i try to look for fun Update. facts i don't know if this is a fun fact but it's made me change the way i looked at like the punisher he's kind of the guy who did all of like the punishments he slimed people and all that stuff oh, okay i remember that um yeah, apparently yeah. they rotated through actors quite a bit because like a lot of the punishers ended up going to jail <laughs> like a lot why i don't know that, that's all i got so like i'm I, kind I of mean, like you put out a casting call it's like hey you want to slime kids? I'm sure there's a profile. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, hey, where you, yeah, like, but, like torture children. Like, like, yeah, like it's it, it was a little weird, but like I, I remember he had like a hood on, like yeah, an executioner yeah, yeah, like hood and stuff. But like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you don't really see many kids show like like kids game shows like that anymore. And I feel like you know you're kind of missing the mark because I remember uh, there was like a ton of like game shows when I was growing up that like kids could go on, yeah. and I always thought that was yeah, really cool. Really, I, I'm sure the. Like, I'm sure there's the some legal stuff. Alone. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the bureaucracy of just getting a show. Like, oh, know, definitely. But at the times. same time, though, it's like it ran for quite a while. Like, it went it? from 1997 to 2003. So people were oh, really enjoying wow. it. And it, another that. Canadian show was uh, filmed in Toronto. Unless it was the Slime Tour. Then that, like, literally hmm. went all over Canada. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that would be a blast. And I think, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun. Nice. Who doesn't want to get slimed? Yeah, the sudden urge to make a magic mud. <laughs> Do you remember that stuff? Magic mug? Mud. Oh, mud. Oh, yeah. Isn't that like moon sand? Well, like you can like, slap it and it's hard, but if you pick it up, it's all soft. Like, yeah, it yeah it's moon it. sand, too. Yeah. It's like all it is is like you put, put it in water, it's still dry. It's a uh, non Newtonian like, yeah. liquid or whatever, I think yeah, it's called. Yeah. yeah. Magic mud. Yep. There's wow, a blast we from the past. <laughs> the, the nostalgia of this episode is wild. There we go. But and, oh yeah. hell, since, since we're on the topic, those like stretchy like hands that you would. <gasps> oh my oh, yeah. god! You could get them with like a toonie, yeah, and like yeah. you could like get it. Oh, I got I got my and sister. And then they the would be like extremely away. dirty by the end of the <laughs> yeah. first oh, my god, day. Yes. Yeah, you had like a, about an hour of yeah. good use yeah. out of the thing, and then and then it's like it stopped sticking because you got so much stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I slapped my sister with that at the one time. <laughs> I got into so much crap for it. <laughs> or there's those little like they're made of the same stuff, but you like throw them on the wall. It'd be like an octopus. Yeah, it would climb down. I always picture that in a Boston pizza. Like when you're Are going in and you see like all of like the stuff you could get or out of the like the treasure chest at red lobster oh my yeah. god yeah or the dentist office yep after yeah. getting your cleaning done if why don't they speaking of like why don't they have that for adults because like i i need that i need <laughs> like, some motivation here, here's an airplane bottle of yes vodka yes. Yeah. <laughs> like cool i'm down for that do it do it again <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Everyone went through their three, right? I th yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. good. I okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm. We were gonna talk about Wally's World with Nicolas Cage, but kind of Wonderland. No, uh, Wally's oh. World. <laughs> well, that's a good movie too. Yeah. Well, that's a good part of a movie with Chevy Chase. Yeah, well, I was gonna I, say, yeah, wasn't that the vacation? Yeah, sorry, but uh, yeah, sorry, Wally's. Wonderland. Willy's, Willy's Wo Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland. I can. Oh man, it's 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 early. Come on. I, I'm curious. I'm, I'm looking forward to like actually talking about it. Because yeah. We will get to it. Yeah. It, it just trying to find it is brutal. Yeah. Like why bother? I, I've seen about some reviews for it. People it either love it or hate it. Yeah. Well, like. And I think it depends on like how you go yeah. into the movie, what you're Definitely. expecting. If you're expecting Five Nights at Fre or Five Nights at Freddy's. Is that, yeah, that's the one. Say it? Well, if you're expecting a movie where Nicolas Cage kicks the crap out of, like, animatronics... This is the movie for you. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But, like, also, I'm just going to shout so out we'll get to it. HBO. Why the heck is there not Canadian, like, HBO Max? I'm mad at you guys, because, like, I would actually, like, subscribe yeah. to that, because they have so much stuff, but it's like, oh, no. Tons. Nope. We only... We, only, we don't do Canada. Like, come on, man. Yep. Not cool. 
That's no. Cool. Well, that wraps up this edition of Media Minute. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Backwards. I'm Rachel Edge. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.